Hi, it's the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, September 23rd. The thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We have several storms to talk about today. We've got Tropical Storm Jerry to the southwest of Bermuda, which could become a threat to the island during the next day or two. We have Tropical Storm Karen in the Eastern Caribbean, which is going to uh, move through Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands tomorrow, and uh, might be something we're gonna have to talk about farther down the road, and we'll talk a lot about that in this video. And we have newly formed Tropical Storm Lorenzo, which is likely to become a powerful storm, but curve away from land into the Eastern Atlantic, and is not expected to be a problem. And we also have a little disturbance off the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, which is not really expected to develop. It's flagged with 10 or 20 percent chances here. A little area of low pressure, but no major models show development due to wind shear and dry air in the region, and is likely to drift westward and just enhance rain chances somewhere along the west Gulf Coast in a couple of days. No significant development expected there. So we're going to start with Tropical Storm Jerry here to the southwest of Bermuda, which is here on the satellite picture. And we still see a partially exposed center of circulation here with most of the convection pushed off to the northeast by the southwesterly flow aloft that you can see with these clouds here. And that's due to this upper level trough that's starting a cut off to the west of Jerry, as we can see on water vapor satellite highlighted in the darker gray, indicating the dry air. And again, you can see the shear coming into the system. At the moment, this trough is actually acting to enhance some of the thunderstorm activity with a baroclinic assist near the storm center as it approaches Bermuda, and this is allowing Jerry to maintain its intensity with a pressure in the low 990s and winds of about 60, 65 miles an hour. Uh, but as this trough continues to cut off and drift southward, it is going to leave Jerry kind of orphaned here under an environment with some shear and dry air coming from the west, uh, but really no bear clinic assist anymore. So within a day or so, this is likely to uh, cause Jerry to weaken in this overall environment. Uh, and the system will generally be moving off toward the northeast and could pass rather close to Bermuda sometime tomorrow or early Wednesday. And this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing that motion. And you can see the eastern side of the storm is the largest with this area in orange showing the tropical storm force wind field, winds of about 40 miles per hour or stronger. And that's on the right hand side, which means that if the storm is passing this close to the island, we do expect tropical storm force conditions here and a tropical storm warning is in effect. Thankfully, as I mentioned, uh, this is likely to be weakening, uh, if anything, as it passes by the island. Certainly nothing like Humberto, which brought uh, well in excess of hurricane force winds to Bermuda. This will not be that, uh, but we will still see nasty conditions there on Wednesday with the potential for flash flooding, uh, high surf, and tropical storm force winds, potentially approaching 60 miles per hour. And then the system is expected to head northeastward out into the open Atlantic. Now exactly how fast it does this is currently a little bit uncertain and it could be slower or faster and that will become important for the evolution of Karen, which we're going to talk about next. And this is uh, that storm down here in the Caribbean. So on the satellite picture, there's Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and the Lesser Antilles Islands. And we have rotation that can be seen before the sun goes down somewhere in this area of the Eastern Caribbean. Karen formed down by Trinidad and Tobago and is now coming up to the north toward Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and is going to continue doing that tonight and tomorrow. And sometime on Tuesday, we'll be moving through this region and a primarily a flooding concern as right now the system remains weak and fairly disorganized. We do have a broad circulation with some thunderstorm activity on the southern side, uh, but mostly sheared to that southern side uh, given a strong upper level flow from the northeast. And this is mostly related to the ridge uh, over the central Atlantic and the outflow from Jerry just coming out of the northeast here, really impinging upon Karen in this environment. Now, as the storm starts to move northward, that shear will start to decrease just a little bit because the shear is worse to the south than it is to the north, and Jerry will start moving farther away at some point over the next couple of days. Uh, but the shear is expected to persist in some fashion, and Karen is likely to be limited fairly uh, substantially as it heads northward, and uh, rapid intensification of any kind is not expected, and intensification really at all uh, is likely to be quite limited during the next uh, day or two. Uh, but the system is surviving here, as we do have a fairly large envelope of circulation. This is uh, very difficult to get to dissipate entirely, uh, but conditions uh, may, may keep this pretty weak for the next couple of days, and it, it may still have a chance at actually dissipating, uh, according to some models, and we'll take a look at that. 
This is the GFS valid Wednesday morning showing low level vorticity or spin in color. So this is where Karen would be on the model by Wednesday morning having moved past Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands the day before. And we have upper level winds in wind barbs here. So we see that northeasterly flow that is currently shearing Karen. That Karen sort of moves up beyond by uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday. And so we see it in lighter 200 millibar flow here with this upper low to the west that has come down from the vicinity of Jerry that we just talked about. And so we have it underneath a bit of an upper level ridge here. Uh, the shear doesn't go to zero though. It does get lighter than today, but we do still have a pretty strong steering flow out of the south or south-southwest where Karen is. And so there's about maybe 15 knots of shear here all told. Uh, the other thing about this pattern is although the shear goes down, the strong low level flows like this with a weak circulation can make it hard for the circulation to remain closed and sometimes these strong flows toward the north tend to stretch out the circulation a little bit, make it hard to stay circular and compact and we'll have to keep an eye on that. The GFS is the weakest model here showing Karen maybe not even a storm on this simulation and if we go out to Thursday I mean it's barely here there's barely there's not even a storm on this particular model the Europeans a little more robust and actually still has a storm here and I think that's probably more likely uh, but we'll keep an eye on it things are not likely to be super favorable for Karen during the next couple of days at the very least and uh, if it has a chance at intensification it's probably going to be uh, a little bit later in the week, uh, but obstacles may remain. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about where this is going in the next few days. We see that it is following the steering flow generally toward the north or northeast at a modest pace. You'll see Jerry is here lingering on the European, uh, still east-northeast of Bermuda at this time, and what this is doing is enhancing the southwesterly flow and kind of dragging Karen up toward Jerry as Jerry itself goes out to sea, and so this is trying to yank Karen a little bit farther northeast. Uh, the GFS is similar, is a little faster with Jerry, but has been getting slower over time. Prior runs of the GFS and some other models did have Jerry escaping faster, which left Karen behind uh, and allowed the storm to stall before getting very far northeast. Recent runs have had Jerry a little bit slower, which kind of drags Karen a little farther to the north prior to a stall that is expected to occur, uh, given a building ridge in the Atlantic. This is the GFS 500 millibar forecast for Thursday afternoon showing there's Karen, there's Jerry, and again Jerry's leaving and there's this little bit of a ridge starting to develop to the northwest of Karen and what happens is once Jerry's influence disappears this ridge really starts building over the western Atlantic due to the large-scale pattern and we're going to see this ridge get much larger over the coming days such that by Friday we see this ballooning ridge really just uh, to the southwest of Bermuda and Karen kind of gets trapped to the south of this ridge and is not able to escape instead starts rotating back around the ridge to the south and west so that by Saturday we see the system is sort of back where it was on Wednesday but now on Saturday and we see this just massive ridge over the western Atlantic which would uh, tend to steer this west and cause problems for the Bahamas and North America potentially. Uh, the details on this though very hard to iron out right now because a lot does depend on the interaction with Jerry over the next few days and the timing of Jerry is still an uncertain thing on the models although I mentioned it is getting slower which would tend to drag Karen farther northeast before getting blocked and turning. The other thing going on here is how strong will Karen be during this whole transition? The problem with this ridge for the storm is that when you have this big ridge like this, uh, it's going to tend to impart some shear. There's some pretty strong northeasterly flow aloft here. And we can see this on the GFS 200 millibar wind forecast. There's Karen. There's our big ridge, and this upper level flow uh, would definitely be imparting some shear and uh, threatening to decouple the vortex. And a lot of this depends on how strong Karen has gotten to this point and how robust it is this year. But both the GFS and European models kind of expect Karen to remain weak uh, in the medium range as we head through the rest of this week and toward the weekend with the Europeans still only showing a modest storm here on Friday and then by Sunday it's it's actually weaker. Now these runs have gone back and forth uh, because if the storm is placed just right 
uh, the shear could be lower. Uh, if it's placed uh, differently, uh, then it could be higher. For example, if we look at this GFS forecast of the upper level flow, here's where Karen is relative to this big ridge. If Karen does happen to be a little bit farther west, say here, by the weekend, then the shear is a lot less than if it's over here. So its placement relative to this big clockwise rotating ridge will matter a lot. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of confidence in exactly how far east-west Karen's going to be by the weekend because, first of all, it's five days out. Second of all, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, including Jerry, this upper low that cuts off to the southwest of Jerry, and exactly how this ridge builds in relation to Karen and how strong Karen, her, uh, the storm itself, is by this time. And uh, so with that... Uh, lack of certainty, uh, there's not a lot of details we can really know except that Karen is likely to come up and kind of stall in here and maybe start tracking back toward the west with time, but whether or not it's really a strong entity at that point is going to be a kind of a wait and see affair for the next couple of days at least until we get more consistency on these forecasts because there's just a lot of ways in which things can turn out differently given the pattern that we have right now. So this is the NHC official forecast kind of showing this idea a weak storm currently only a depression uh, but is expected to perhaps bring tropical storm force winds around 40 miles an hour to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands where a tropical storm warning is in effect but the primary impact here is likely to be rainfall and the potential for flash flooding in these islands during the next day or so and then by Wednesday this starts to move on to the north beyond the islands and we see this north north northeast track occur through the middle of the week and then we see the stalling occur by the end of the week somewhere south of Bermuda again how far east west is it in here when it stalls we're not really entirely sure uh, and we'll have to see uh, but in general this is likely to be meandering in the southwest Atlantic as we head through the end of the week and potentially into next week and as far as potential turns toward the US really we're not talking about any kind of worry just yet because we don't know if Karen's going to survive the remainder of this week and if it is a threat to North America it's going to occur a very long time in the future still we're talking about the end of the week and it's forecast to be way out here still and moving slowly uh, so we're talking about probably a week or longer before this is a legitimate land threat so we've got a long time to watch this one but make sure you have a hurricane plan just in case it is the peak of the season and we've already had threats to land and landfalls so obviously uh, good to be ready no matter what's going on that's it for tonight thanks for watching